CCNA version 7, Enterprise Networking Security and Automation version 7.0 ENSA. ENSA Practice Packet Tracer Skills Assessment. Addressing table. These routers, six routers, RTR1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. RTR1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Six routers. And three hosts, ABC. Host A, host B, host C. Utility server. This server. Partner server. This, uh, this server here on LAN A, partner server, and mobile host, this uh, this host, this laptop, and external server on internet, this server. Okay, configure OSPF, activate OSPF, use process ID 10 for OSPF activation on all routers. Activate OSPF by configuring the interfaces of the network devices in the branch 1 network. Okay, this is the branch 1 label, so this network is branch 1, including RTR1, 2, and 3. And the instruction says interfaces of the network devices. Okay, configure interfaces. OSPF on interfaces and do not use network statements. Okay. Okay, and go to RTR1, go to command line interface, then enter, enable. So RTR1 has three active physical interfaces. But this interface, uh, serial 011, is connected to Internet. And do not configure this with OSPF. Okay. Configure terminal. Remember, process ID 10, router OSPF 10. Okay. Then exit and enter to interface serial 010. Interface serial 010. And activate IP OSPF process ID 10 and area 0. Okay, single area, area 0. And then configure gigabit 000. Interface gigabit zero 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 gigabit zero 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 and the same command IP OSPF ten area zero exit okay and remember the IP addresses already configured on all devices so you can verify um, and enter show running config. Okay, all IP addresses configured on all interfaces. Go to RTR2. Enter enable configure terminal router OSPF 10. Exit. And uh, how you can verify the, the physical active interfaces to show IP interface brief. This is another way, another way to review the physical active interfaces. Up and up, gigabit 000 and gigabit 001. Gigabit 000 and gigabit 001. Interface gigabit 000, IP OSPF 10, OSPF 10, area 0. And gigabit 001, the same command, 
IP OSPF to an area zero exit. Okay, and go to RTR3. Enter, enable, configure terminal, router, OSPF, tank, exit, to show IP interface brief, gigabit uh, 000, gigabit 001, gigabit interface gigabit 000, IP OSPF 10, ADS 0, gigabit 001, IP OSPF 10, ADS 0, exit. Very nice. And now, Activate OSPF using network statements and inverse mask on the routers in the HQ network. Okay? Instruction says network statements and inverse mask on HQ network. This is HQ label. And so HQ network includes RTR4, RTR5, and RTR6. Okay, three routers on HQ network and configure network statements. And inverse masks. Go to RTR4, RTR4, okay and for the purposes of this assessment please enter the network statements in the following order. Start with RTR4, so this is RTR4, enter, uh, enter RTR4, okay Okay, enable configure terminal router OSPF 10. Okay, remember the process ID is 10 in all cases, router OSPF 10, enter. Using uh, do show IP root connect. And you have three directly connected networks. This network, 10, 10, 0 to 4 DA prefix theory. Network, network statement, 10, 10, 0 to 4 DA. The inverse mask, the wildcard mask for zero D is this three, and single area is area zero. Enter ten ten zero to zero D six. Ten ten zero to zero D six. Prefix zero D so wildcard mask is uh, three area zero. Enter. There is a neighbor adjacency between RTR4 and RTR1 because you configured serial 0 to 0 with this network statement. Okay. Then 10, 10, 0 to 4D. 10, 10, 0 to 4D. The same wildcard mask area 0 and the then exit. Next, uh, RTR5, RTR5. Okay, three directly connected networks. Enable configure terminal router OSPF 10. Do show IP route connected. Three directly connected networks and Use network statements and use uh, 10, 10, 0 to 40, 10, 10, 0 to 40, wildcard 0, 0, 0, 3, area 0. And then 10, 10, 0 to 44, 10, 10, 0 to 44, enter. Okay, and finally, network. 192.168.33.0 the wildcard mask for 28 prefix is uh, 15 okay and area 0 enter okay three network statements and this network adjacency is for this network statement for the network 240 Okay, for this network 240, the neighbor adjacency between RTR4 and RTR5. Okay, then exit, and uh, you can verify, uh, exit, show running config. 
space space three network statements very nice and go to rtr6 the same process um, should have four directly connected networks enable configure terminal router ospf 10 to show ip route connected Okay, four directly connected networks, network 1010244 uh, uh, prefix, wildcard mask is 380. Okay, enter uh, the network at the in this uh, network 244 between RTR5 and RTR6. Okay, go back to RTR6. Okay, and The next is uh, 248, 248, the same wildcard mask, the same inverse mask, 80, enter. Okay, uh, the neighbor adjacency with, uh, between RTR4 and RTR6, and the next network, 4640 inverse 255 and the another 182168 50 enter exit very good and exit again and verify show ip uh, show running config okay verify you have four directly connected networks Configure router IDs. Configure router IDs on the multi access network routers as follows RTR1, RTR2, RTR3. So go to RTR1, enter, enable, configure terminal, router OSPF10, router dash uh, router dash ID, uh, use 9999, exit, RTR2. Enter, enable, configure terminal, router, OSPF 10, router, dash ID, 8. Okay. Okay, uh, router, dash ID, 888. Eight. Okay. Okay, uh, router ID, 8888. Eight, eight, eight. Exit and go to rtr3 enter enable configure terminal router ospf 10 ospf 10 router dash id 7777 exit very nice customize ospf operation configure router rtr1 with the highest ospf interface priority so that it will always be the designated router of the multi-access network. This is the multi-access network, uh, RTR1, RTR2, RTR3. And RTR1 should be the designated router. So the interface connected to the multi-access network is gigabit 0000. Okay, interface gigabit 000. IPOSPF 10 IPOSPF priority the highest is 255 enter X on router RTR1 configure the default route to the ISP cloud using the exit interface command argument okay RTR1 is connected to internet using the exit interface serial 011 Okay, on global configuration mode, IP route, the default route, quad zero and exit interface, here and zero, one, one, enter. Don't worry about this message. Automatically distribute the default route to all routers in the network. Okay, on RTR1, router OS, OSPF 10, and uh, default dash information originate enter 
Let's configure the hello and that timer values on the interfaces that connect RTR1 and RTR4. Okay, this link between RTR1 and RTR4 to be twice the default values. Okay, configure the hello and that timer values to be twice the default values. Okay, on this link between RTR1 and RTR4. So on RTR1, go to interface uh, serial 010. Okay, interface serial 010 and IP or SPF hello dash interval. The default value is 10, so twice is 20. Enter. And that interval, IP or SPF, that interval, the default value is 40, so twice is 80. Okay, excellent. The same way on the another SAR serial 0 to 0 on RTR4. Enter, enable computer terminal interface serial 0 to 0, IP uh, OSPF, hello dash interval. The default value is 10, so twice is 20, and that interval, uh, the default value is, okay, uh, and, uh, for, for that interval, the default value is uh, 40, so should be 80. Okay, IP OSPF, that interval, 80, and the exit. Configure the OSPF routers so the default cost value for gigabit Ethernet interface will be 10 and the cost value for fast Ethernet will be 100. Okay, by default, the autopost reference bandwidth is 100. And 100 represents uh, 100 million or 100 uh, megabits per second. This is the gigabit interface, the bandwidth of gigabit interface that is uh, 1 gigabit per second or, or 1000 million. Okay, gigabit interface. So this operation results in uh, results in 0 0.1 and for fast ethernet interface this is the bandwidth for fast Ethernet interface, 100 megabits per second, or 100 million. The result is one. You need to use the auto cost reference bandwidth to 10,000, and 10, and 10,000 represents 10,000 million or 10,000 megabits per second, or 10 gigabits per second. Okay, 10,000 is uh, 10 gigabits per second or 10,000 millions. And for a gigabit interface, uh, 1,000 million, the operation will result in 10. And for fast Ethernet interface, uh, 100 million or 100 megabits per second, the result will be 100. So this is my case. The cost for gigabit is 10 and the cost and the cost for fast Ethernet interface is 100. Okay? For gigabit is 10 and for fast Ethernet 100. For gigabit 10 and for fast Ethernet 100, so you need to use 10,000. Okay. Okay, so start with RTR1, enter, enable, configure terminal, router, OSPF, 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 OSPF 10, auto dash cost reference dash bandwidth 10,000. Okay, four zeros, 10,000. Don't worry about this message because uh, please, please ensure reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. Okay, exit.
the same command in, in our routers. RTR2 enable configure terminal router SPF 10 auto cost reference bandwidth 10,000. Let's see. RTR3 enable configure terminal router OSPF 10 auto dash cost reference dash bandwidth four zeros Excellent. RTR4 enter enable configure terminal configure terminal router or SPF 10 auto dash cost reference dash bandwidth four zeros exit RTR5 and there enable configure terminal. Router OSPF, OSPF 10 auto cost reference bandwidth 10,000. Let's see. RTR6 enable configure terminal. Router OSPF 10 auto cost reference dash bandwidth 10,000 hex very good all routers configure OSPF cost value of RTR4 interface CL 011 to 50 okay go to RTR4 Interface CL011. Okay, cost 50. Okay, this interface uh, CL011 cost 50. IP OSPF OSPF uh, cost 50. Exit. Configure OSPF so that the routing updates are not sent into networks where OSPF updates are not required. Okay, for example, on RTR1, the passive interface is serial 011 because it's not participating, it's not included in OSPF process. Okay, uh, the router OSPF, OSPF 10. Passive interface serial zero one one enter exit RTR two is uh, gigabit zero 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 because there is no uh, another router on this on this side interface gigabit zero zero zero. Okay, exit. Uh, not on the interface is on the OSPF process router OSPF. Jam passive interface. You with zero zero zero. Exit. RTR three gigabit zero zero zero. The LAN interface router OSPF ten passive interface. You with zero zero zero. Exit. RTR4, no passive interfaces because all interfaces are included on OSPF process and those interfaces have uh, routers, the neighbors, and RTR5, gigabit 000. Router OSPF10, passive interface, gigabit 000. Enter X. Uh, RTR6, gigabit 000, and gigabit 001. Router SPF10, passive dash interface gigabit 000, passive interface gigabit 001. Excellent. 
So uh, now you can verify the routing tables um, before to configure NAT. For example, RTR1 and show IP routes. So you have uh, one, two, three, three directly connected networks, three directly connected networks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven OSPF remote networks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have uh, 182.168.44 is this, 182.168.44 with 182.168.55 is missing. Mm, review RTR6. Okay. And the network statement should be 182.168.55.0, 182.168.55.0, but I just configured 182.168.66.0. Okay, so remove 66 and add 55. Okay. Go to router OSPF tag, no router, no network. 182.168.66.0. Uh, Use this wildcard mask, area zero. Okay, remove with the no keyword. Okay, remove this 66, remove this 66 and add 55. Okay, enter and add uh, network 2260i 55.0, wildcard 0, 0, 0, 55 area 0. Okay, exit. Okay, and go to RTR1 again. And show IP root. Now you have one, two, three, three directly connected networks, okay, with letter C, three directly connected networks, one, two, three, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight OSPF remote networks. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight OSPF remote networks and one static route to internet, one static route to internet. And you can verify this on all routers, for example, on RTR6 and show IP route and verify one, two, three, four directly connected networks, four directly connected networks and one, two, three, four, five, six, six remote OSPF networks. One, two, three, uh, four, five, six remote OSPF networks and one external OSPF to internet, one external OSPF to internet. Very nice. And you can verify ping from host A ping to, for example, this uh, host C uh, 4444, 192.168.4444. Success to utility server 3314 3314 very nice and uh, to internet 203.0 113 100 Think. 
success. Very good. Then configure NAT. In this part of the practice skills assessment, you will configure static and dynamic NAT at the network edge. This is the network edge on RTR1 because it's a facing internet. Configure a static NAT. Configure a static NAT to translate the address to the partner server on LAN1. Okay. Uh, this is partner server. Okay. And configure a static NAT for this partner server. The public address is 1820215. Uh, verify that the translation are occurring. Okay, and go to RTR1, configure terminal, IP NAT inside source static, static NAT, okay, static NAT, and uh, the private address for partner server is. Uh, 1821 68 11 100 okay 1821 68 11 100 and public will be 1820215 1820215 okay enter and configure the interfaces for NAT Serial 011 is external or outside the face serial 011 IP NAT outside outside and gigabit 000 inside interface gigabit 000 IP NAT inside that's okay and how uh, you can verify verify the translation from external server ping to the public IP address of partner server. Okay, go to external server desktop common prompt and ping the public IP address of the partner server 192.0.2.150. Success. And here on RTR1, and show IP NAT translation. So you can verify how the inside global is the public IP address and inside local is the private IP address. And outside local and outside global is the external server IP address. Okay, and now configure dynamic path port address translation. Create a access list one to allow addresses in the 182.168.0.0 prefix existing network to be translated. Okay, on RTR1, configure terminal access list one permit 182.168.0.0. The wildcard for 16 is 00 255 Enter. Ready. Create an ad pool name at pool dash one. Okay, case sensitive. IP not pool. The name is pool dash one. It should use others in the range 182.0.2.116 to 182.0.2.118. 182.0.2.116. Okay. Two one eight two zero two one hundred eighteen. Okay, it says one eight two zero one hundred eighteen and should be one eight two zero two one hundred eighteen. Okay, one eight two zero two one hundred eighteen. And the net mask. And what is the net mask? Okay, you need to know the net mask of serial zero one one on RTR one. RTR1 serial 011 is 29. And 29 is 25, 25, 25, 48. 
Okay, enter. Now, configure now to dynamically use the addresses in the pool for all traffic entering and exiting the company network. Remember that it is likely that more than three hosts will be accessing traffic on the internet. Okay, so use IP NAT inside source list. The list is number one. And use the pool. The pool is pool dash one case sensitive pool dash one. And remember, uh, more than three hosts will be accessing traffic. You have three IP addresses here, 116, 117, and 118, but uh, more than three. So use overload, overload for path. Okay, enter. And now uh, you just configured serial 011 outside, gigabit 00 inside. Uh, serial 011 outside. Gigabit 000 inside, and don't forget serial 010 inside. Okay, interface serial 010 inside. Let's see. To provide dynamic NAT to this another side of the network. Okay, and verify host A, for example. Ping the external server. Ping again, ping 203.0.100.13.100, enter. Success. And go to RTR1 and show IP NAT translation. And now you can see the the inside local is 192.168.11.11, the IP address of host A, IP config on host A, 192.168.11.11, and the inside global 182.0.2, 116, 192.0.2.116, the first IP. Okay, very nice. In the outside local, in outside global, the IP address of external server. So dynamic NAT is working very well. And also for host C, think the external server 203.0.100.13.100, success. Go to RTR1, repeat, show IP NAT translation. And now you can see the IP address of host C4444 and inside global is translated. And inside global, that translation 182.0.2.116. Very good. Configure access list. Configure access control list to meet the following requirements. Note, use host and any keywords whenever possible. Always explicitly configure the default deny condition when it is to be used as part of the access list functionality so, so that it can be logged when the condition is met. You don't need to specify the default deny condition if it is counteracted with the permit IP any any for this assessment. All access lists should be placed in the most efficient location possible according to the guidelines specified in the curriculum. Okay, uh, remember this. Create a named standard access list to explicitly prevent all external traffic accessing the telnet lines on R1. Okay, R1 uh, is RTR1. Name of the list BTY dash block. Okay, sensitive. Go to RTR1. Configure terminal. The name it access list and is uh, name it standard access list IP access dash list standard and the name BTY dash block 
Okay, case sensitive, enter. All addresses in the 18168006 network only should be allowed to access the BTY lines. Okay, permit 18168006 and the wildcard 00255255. Enter. Okay, and remember, always explicitly configure the default deny condition when it is to be used as part of the ACL functionality. Okay, so use deny any, okay? Exit. Okay, but uh, before to apply on um, BTY lines, uh, exit and verify the lines. Show running flash config, space, space. And you have uh, lines BTY from zero to four. Okay, configure terminal line BTY from zero to four. And use uh, access class. The name of the access list BTY block incoming traffic. Okay. BTY dash block. BTY dash block incoming traffic. Enter. Then exit. Okay. Verify. Okay, for, for example, from host A to the RTR1, tell that um, RTR1 gigabit zero 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 on RTR1 is ten ten one seventeen. Ten, ten, one, seventeen. Trying to open, so it's closed, and this will be permitted because host A is uh, the IP address of host A is one eighty one sixty eight eleven eleven, and uh, verify router RTR one. Login command is applied, but needs a password. Okay, it needs a password. So configure a password, line BTY 0 to 4, password, for example, Cisco, exit, exit, uh, show running config, and now line BTY 0 to 4, the mm -hmm. access list, password, and login. Okay, and from host A, try again to login gigabit 000, 000 on router RTR1, telnet 101017. Password Cisco. Very nice. It's working very well. Exit. Or try to access from RTR4. Okay, for example, from RTR4. Uh, enable uh, Telnet. Try to access uh, serial 010 router RTR1. Serial 010 10, 10, 0, 2, 37. From RTR4 10, 10, 0, 2, 37. Refused by the remote host. Okay, very nice. Access list is working because this network is 10, 10, 10. Okay, the source is uh, serial 0 to 0 from RTR4. It's 10, 10, 0, 2, 0, 8. This is the source and it's not permitted by the access list. Create a numbered standard access list to prevent all hosts on LAN1 from accessing LAN2. Use 10 as the number for the list. Okay, instruction says LAN1 and LAN2 and should be LAN A and LAN B. Okay, LAN A and LAN B. So, create a number of standard access list to prevent all hosts on LAN A from accessing LAN B. Use the tag as the number for the list. Okay. And if it's a standard access list, it should be configured close to the destination. LAN A is the source and LAN B the destination. 
So close to the destination, configure, configure on RTR3. Go to RTR3, enter, enable, configure terminal. Access list 10. Okay, number it, standard access list, number 10. And uh, prevent host on LAN A accessing LAN B. Okay, the source is 192.168.11.0. Prefix 24. Go to RTR3, access list 10. Prevent is deny 192.168.11.0. Wildcard 424.000.255. That is enough. Ended. If you are denying this, uh, this source, this network, here there is a implicit deny any that will deny any other. So you need to permit the access to other networks. And you don't need to specify the default deny condition. If it is co-directed with the permit IP any, any for this assessment. Okay, so access list then permit any. And so if you will deny some uh, source, permit any other network. So you can apply um, the access list can be applied on gigabit 001 incoming traffic or on gigabit 000 outgoing traffic. Okay, in my case, I will use uh, gigabit 001 incoming traffic. Interface gigabit 001 IP access group 10 incoming traffic. Enter. Exit. Okay, then verify ping from host A to host B, from host A ping to host B, host B IP address is 2222, 192, 192, 168, 22, 22. Okay, destination host unreachable, and from host C ping host B, from host C ping host B. 192.168.22.22. Success. The access list is working. Okay, very nice. And create an extended number of access list that will prevent traffic from the LAN4 network from accessing the HTTP service that is running on utility server, on this server. All other traffic from LAN4 hosts should be able to access the network. Number the list one of one. 101. From LAN4, LAN4 is the source. Okay, and from the LAN4, uh, LAN4 is uh, LAN D. Okay, LAN D. It should be create an extended number of access list that will prevent traffic from the LAN D from accessing the HTTP service that is running on utility server. Okay, so LAN D is the source and the destination utility server. All other traffic from LAN D hosts should be able to access the network. Number the list one of one. Okay, and is extended access list. And if this is the source LAN D and destination is utility server, extended access list should be placed close to the source. If the source is LAN D, it should be applied on router RTR6. Okay, go to RTR6, enter, enable, configure terminal. Uh, access list uh, number one of one and prevent so will be deny HTTP service HTTP service uses TCP okay and prevent traffic from LANDI network from LANDI network is 192.168.44.0 but you will apply on gigabit 00 later. So any host in this network, any host in this network. Uh, and remember this, use host and any keywords whenever possible. So here on RTR6, use any as the source, any. So any host in this network. And the destination is the host, okay, use host the IP address of the utility server. Utility server is 
3314. Okay. 3314. RTR6, 192168, 3314. Okay, but remember the port for HTTP is 80 or equivalent. And 80 is triple W or use number 80. Okay. I will use triple W in this case. Enter. If you if you are denying some source, you need to permit any other traffic because uh, all other traffic from long D host should be able to access the network. Okay, so access list one of one permit IP from any to any. Okay, and apply this. Uh, here on gigabit 000 incoming traffic okay uh, close to the source close to the source gigabit 000 incoming traffic interface gigabit 000 ip access group one of one incoming traffic and the exit uh, then verify uh, from host C, ping the utility server, ping 192.168.33.14, sorry, ping 192.168.33.14, enter, success, but try to access HTTP using web browser, 192.168.33.14, okay, and request timeout okay access list is working very well but for example from host b try to access web browser uh, using web browser try to access utility server 182.168.33.14 very good access list is working very well manage network devices configure ntp network time protocol configure rather rtr5 to use utility server as its time source. Okay, this is RTR5. Go to RTR5, enter, enable, configure, terminal, NTP server, and the IP address of utility server. 192.168.33.40, enter. Backup iOS to the server. Backup the iOS image file to router RTR5 to utility server. Okay, go to RTR5. Okay, and I want to know the, the name of the image. Use show flash to verify show flash column. And this is the name of the of the iOS image. Then copy from flash column to tftp tftp column okay source file name use this isr this copy then paste enter address of the remote host uh, utility server ip address 192.168.33.14 enter Destination file name, this by default, enter. Okay, wait a moment. May take a while. Okay, very nice. Okay. So on utility server, go to uh, service. TFTP, and you can see this is the the image ISR 4300. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much.